Good morning, dolls. Welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, we had talked a few weeks ago about um, some kits that I was going to start doing to just kind of help out um, some of those of you who are newer to making furniture um, because I think kits are a great source of helping you learn uh, the basic components of furniture um, assembly. So yeah, let's get to it. Now, if you saw the haul, if you haven't saw, seen the haul regarding uh, me receiving this kit, definitely check it out because it was a little comical because you see the picture on the box. Um, this is not what was um, in the box, but no worries. It's still a, a component of the dining room. So we're definitely going to use that. Um, it actually is um, a Fife Dining, D D Duncan Fife, Duncan Fife dining table and I think that's going to work good. I actually looked at it and really looked at the dimensions of the table. It's actually kind of going to work out better for me than the original table I had. The dining room table that is existing that I have um, prepared for the Roman house dollhouse is relatively small compared to this. This one um, has a leaf so it's a lot bigger. So let's check it out and make sure it has all of the pieces um, inside um, that are supposed to be in there. It's different from what was on the package. I actually contacted uh, the sellers. They apologized. They even refunded me my money. So I thought that was really kind of them um, to do that. But I really wasn't upset. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Look at this. So just imagine this is going to be the surface of the dining room table. That is perfect because that gives me so much more as far as surface for putting food and um, dining room setting and uh, centerpiece. Uh, so this actually worked out better than I originally um, imagined. So yeah, sometimes you get those things that, um, yeah, it looked like it was a bad thing, but it's gonna work out in my favor. So I'm, I'm just excited about that. And it appears to have all the pieces. Those are the four. Okay, so four spokes here. Okay, here we, okay, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. Okay, we got the four legs. So it appears we have everything, all of our pieces, so it's time for assembly. But I'm gonna do something a little bit different today than I did with my cabinet for the pantry where we assembled it and then we painted it. Now paint, you can paint over glue spillage. But in this case, for this dining room table, I want it to be a very, very pristine finish and I don't want any glue marks on it and you can't stain over wood glue. If you get wood glue on the surface, it's over. So I'm gonna go ahead and stain the pieces before we assemble them. So if there's a little glue spillage, we'll be able to clean it up and it'll be undetectable. So that's how we're gonna do this today, dolls. Okay, and before I um, start the assembly, I'm gonna do a light sanding. You all know I, you know I hate sanding. I don't like sanding, but I see a couple little burrs, you know, on the edges. It's actually finished very nicely. It doesn't have a lot, but I want it to be absolutely smooth because this is my dining room table. And so, yeah, I'm gonna turn the sound off um, during this portion, but you wanna sand in the direction of the grain and just smooth it out. You don't wanna curve anything or reshape anything, but I am gonna do a little extra because you know I want my piece to look a little bit uh, aged and worn. Okay, one moment. So I turned the sound off so you wouldn't hear the actual sanding, but you see here I used the regular sandpaper and the buffing block. So now I'm ready to go ahead and add my stain. And I would say always use a clean brush or a new brush or definitely clean. And it would be best practice to put a little of your stain into a little cup. Yeah, dolls, sometimes I don't do that. I use directly from the pot but I did realize I needed to wipe away and make sure there was no dust on the surface of the wood. And I used a baby wipe to wipe it. Um, a clean dry cloth may be better, slightly damp, 
and just make sure you get all the sawdust off of it um, from the sanding so that you'll get a nice smooth finish. Now, I did line my table with wax paper and I do use tin foil just to protect the top of my desk. Um, as I mentioned before, the top of my desk is a big giant piece of tile, so I really can't damage it, but it's just easier clean up when you just protect it a little. So I just took my time and began to add the stain in the direction of the grain. Now, another best practice would be to seal the ends um, around the table before you stain because of the ends of the table, the wood is more porous. So it's actually gonna absorb more of the stain than the surface or the part where the grain is. You'll see what I mean in a minute. As I get around those edges, it's gonna get a lot darker quicker because it absorbs more. And as I mentioned, this is a penetrating stain. This is that vera, Verathane stain. And I'm actually using um, a color called Colonial Maple as my base color. Then I'm gonna add several coats of the cherry color, which is my actual favorite, but I do like this one as a base. Now dolls, I definitely want you to know that when you're staining um, your furniture, I'm using an actual wood stain that I bought from the home store, but you can use acrylic paint to stain. You can use shoe polish to stain your wood. Um, you could even use instant coffee to stain your wood. So don't feel that if you don't have actual wood stain that you can't get a nice color for your dollhouse um, miniatures. The objective is to add color, to stain it, and you can do that by any means necessary. Don't restrict yourself. Experiment, play, have fun. You may come up with something that you never consider you wanted. And so after I did the bottom of the tape, the top of the table, I did the bottom half to make sure the color was even. And I think you dolls can see now how the ends of the, uh, the ends of the table are a little bit darker. So again, to add stain to those spindles and legs, and that was pretty tedious. And you can see the mode or tone is changing here as I do the legs and the, the spindles for the table. I got ready to do my cherry wood and uh, yeah, little Gretchen showed up. The cherry is my favorite color and I really was excited about uh, adding the cherry color on top of the colonial maple. And it seems the more I added uh, the cherry, the more excited I got. And um, yeah, everything changed. So dolls, in the beginning, as I mentioned, you should add thin coats of the color to the surface of your miniatures. And uh, yeah, little Gretchen didn't want to do that anymore. Um, she really wanted to get that cherry color on because that's her shade and she really likes it. And I was a little bit concerned because I felt like she was adding too much at one time. Although this is not best practice. But I just let her go ahead and play. It's just staying. It turned out okay. Um, I was concerned at one point that there was going to be splotchy with the spindles and the legs. But I let her know she was not going to be able to assist me with the assembly of the table. So I let her just go ahead and have her fun. At first, I was really glad that she was focused on the spindles and the legs, and then she went for the tabletops again. And actually, it turned out really good because I wanted it to have several layers because I did want the color to come out a little bit richer and darker, although her process was not my process. It actually was turning out pretty. And you see, it's way too much uh, stain on that brush, 
But yeah, in the end, it turned out. So I just want to encourage you dolls. I left this here so you can see that sometime in the process of making miniatures, things will look a little pre-K. It'll get a little messy. It'll look a little crazy, almost like a train wreck. But if you just give it some time and work with it, be patient, you'll end up with something really, really beautiful, something you'll be proud to display in your dollhouse or your setting. Don't give up on yourself in the creative process. Okay, so now that I've cleaned up little Gretchen's mess and everything has dried, everything looks great. It really, really turned out good. And I just wanted to show you dolls again, the table I originally um, chose or had uh, for the rooming house dollhouse dining room. Yeah, it's a really cute piece. Um, but yeah, what we made here today in the kit is going to work out much better. Um, it's bigger, it's wider, and I can, I'm going to leave it where I can remove the leaf at will. So when I set up the table, I'll probably put some tacky wax or mini hold in between, um, the joints of the leaf to, you know, make it secure, but I'm not going to glue it together where I won't be able to change it up if I need to. Yeah, but this is a beautiful table. And just look at how much more surface area I have. Yeah, that's going to be great when I do my setting. So let's go ahead and get this all assembled so we can just see how it looks all in the end. So just want to just look at the bottom. So I uh, see they already have the pre-drilled holes. So that's great. So I've got a broken piece of stir stick uh, to add my glue. I have a little um, Gorilla Wood glue in a loose little piece of card over to the side. Now, when I looked at the spindles, I noticed the design on the spindles is a little different. Um, the, there's a thinner part that goes up into the table and it's a little, the part, that goes into the leg portion is a little thicker. So never throw away your instructions until your piece is complete because sometimes little details like that you don't notice until it's time to assemble. So you want to be very, very careful. Even though our wood is already stained, you still don't want to get glue all over your project. Um, it's going to happen. It just happens when you're um, assembling pieces. But you just want to put a very small amount for it to bond. The Gorilla Wood Glue really does what it says. So you don't need a lot, but you do want it to be an adequate amount um, to hold your piece together securely. Okay, so the pre-drill hold, you're just more or less sticking it in almost like a little peg and make sure you stick it all the way in so that it's secure. Now, although the Gorilla Wood Glue does um, catch fast it does give you a little bit of wiggle time so if you need to adjust it after you get your other uh, legs in you'll be able to to make sure everything is straight I personally would never advise anyone to assemble wood furniture with the crazy or super glue um, it bonds too quickly it sets too quickly it doesn't give you enough time uh, the real Gorilla Wood Glue is good and it's flexible even as it dries because you, if you look really closely, those legs aren't absolutely straight, but they will be when they're connected to the little block and the legs. So again, just take your time and the wood glue is always best when assembling um, wood furniture. Now, when I complete uh, these, uh, get in them and you see how I'm wiping after I put each um, spindle in, that's just to ensure that I don't have any glue spillage outside because I want this to look really neat and really, really clean, a really clean finish when I'm done. And uh, definitely always keep a uh, baby wipes or a wet one or even a damp cloth nearby when you're doing these types of things because like I said, spillage happens, but it doesn't have to ruin your piece. Now, after I got these um, spindles in, I actually should have gone ahead and put the little block on the ends of those spindles to make sure that they're absolutely straight. And I didn't, dolls. I actually went on to start to put the other spindles in the other portion of the table. Again, I should have done it. I didn't. But the 
project still came out great. So don't sweat it if things happen that um, you didn't realize or you didn't follow the instructions perfectly, you still can end up with a really nice piece. And there it is. I finished the legs. I was able to adjust it because remember, I said the wood glue is forgiving and flexible. So it worked out and the finish came out nice. Even though uh, little Gretchen just went wild with that stain, it turned out really, really nice. And it's no splotching on the legs at all. It looks great. And I turned the light on a little bit so you all can see the detail. And we don't have any um, glue spillage. It looks really, really neat. And I'm actually, like I said, I'm probably going to put uh, like a wax um, finish on it a little bit later just to protect it because I really don't um, like the high shine of the polyurethane. Um, I'm probably going to use like a neutral shoe polish to rub into the grain to protect it because there's a little wax in that and that'll be good as a gentle way to preserve the color and protect the wood. This turned out really beautiful. I really am excited about decorating and setting up the dining room now. So I'm definitely inspired about decorating. And look at the difference between the surface area of the table that I um, originally had and this one we just made with the kit. This is perfect for uh, my plans, actually even better. So now I can add more chairs um, to go around the table. That's beautiful. I'm really proud of this doll. So I hope you dolls can see that there's more than one way to decorate your dollhouse or setting. Remember, it's a collection. Things you made, things you made from a kit, things you purchased, things that were gifted to you. You know, you want your dollhouse to be just a collection of really beautiful things. And it doesn't matter how you acquired them as long as they look really good together. Now dolls, we do have another kit to finish, the one that we came in the lot with this table. So that's going to be forthcoming. So we have a lot of ground to cover here in the Rooming House Dollhouse and here on Little Gretchen's Workshop. And so to ensure that you don't miss an episode, always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 730 Eastern Standard Time. I sure have enjoyed this time with you dolls. I want to say a special thank you to all my subscribers and to those who haven't subscribed, but you're watching. I appreciate you as well. Okay, you dolls can see that I'm really excited about how this table turned out and all the extra room I have to set up things. So I just threw a few things on it just to see how it turned out. Those legs look great and little Gretchen didn't ruin the legs with the extra stain. So since I made this table, I'm really ready and inspired about starting the next phase of the Roman House Dollhouse renovation. Stay tuned so you don't miss out. Looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.